Burn it! Oh. Uh, could you read the script? What? Uh, uh, what? We started filming. Read the script. Okay, I just, I don't feel very good right now. Just read it. Are you looking for great drawing apps if you're just a beginner that are also free? Well, I have great news for you. That is what today's video is about. So let's check out the apps. Cut. The first app is new to the list this year. This is Adobe Fresco. It's legit a great drawing app. And now it is also legit free. You used to have to have the full version of the Adobe Creative Suite, which costs $60 a month to get this app. And they also had a scaled back free version available too. But Adobe has decided to just go all in and make this one free to compete with some of the other apps that are available for the iPad, like Procreate. But now all you need to use it is a free Adobe account. That is where my only reservation in recommending this app comes in. It is free now, but will it be free in a year, in five years? Is this just a way to suck people into the Adobe ecosystem and then change things up? So, you know, I just keep that in the back of your mind. If I could trust this app to stay free and not pull any kind of shenanigans in the future, this would be hands down my favorite app on this list. So what about this app do I really like? Well, it is designed from the ground up for touchscreens like the iPad. That means when you open it up, it's just super easy for anyone to just pick up and use the very first time. You just tap on a brush, pick up what you want to draw with, and you start drawing. It's very straightforward, and it's very much inspired by other apps that are available on the iPad, like Procreate that I mentioned a minute ago. See this drawing that I'm working on? This is from my Intro to Digital Art class. I have it on my website with my other courses. In that course, I go over the techniques beginners need when they're just getting into digital art. But if you want to learn more about that, just check it out over on my website where I have that and my other courses. Anyway. Back to the video. So what is this app's superpower? I think it's definitely the brush selection. Fresco is built around Photoshop brushes and there are a billion Photoshop brushes out there dating back decades at this point. From free ones that people have made to really sophisticated paid brush sets that emulate real life things like pastels and watercolors, oil paint. When Fresco first came out to add more depth, they created something that they call live brushes that try to emulate wet media. So there's six different watercolor brushes and seven different oil brushes. The watercolor brushes emulate real watercolor with colors bleeding into each other as you paint. You can even lay down water first on your canvas to get that real paper feel, wet paper feel. It's just kind of a cool idea. I haven't seen other apps do it this well. And this was Fresco's gimmick when it first launched, but Adobe never really followed up on it and released more of these live brushes. I think that's really a missed opportunity. There's also vector brushes in here, which are very cool in their own way because they look and feel and you lay them down like traditional brush strokes, but they end up acting like vectors. So you can zoom way in and they retain their crispness and their clarity. But Beyond the brushes, it has everything that I look for in a drawing app. Fully featured layers, selection tools, even some basic animation tools. Where is it available? It's on Windows, it's on iPads, and uh, yeah, that's it. There's no Mac version, there's no Android version. It's designed specifically for touch screens. So iPads, you're good to go. Windows tablets, it works really well on a Windows tablet. If you have a drawing tablet that does not have touch features, you're probably gonna have a harder time using this app. Definitely something you wanna keep in mind when you're looking at the apps on this list. I don't know why they don't have an Android version yet. This seems like it would be perfect for Android. I would love, love this on Android, but Adobe hasn't really done much on Android as a platform, so I'm not holding my breath that we will see this anytime soon, but you know, we can hope. So I give Fresco my free app seal of approval. Oh my gosh, a burb. I'm an Ibis. Cool, cool. Next on this list is one of my favorite mobile drawing apps. It's Ibis Paint X. I'm an Ibis. It's, it's on Android and iOS. It's free to use on both. Its superpower are just the sheer number of great inking brushes available here. And the business model is ad supported. If you want, you can pay a few bucks and make the ads go away forever. But if you don't mind the ads and watching one every day, what that does is it unlocks all of the brushes. I'm not talking about one brush per ad that you watch. You watch one ad and the app totally unlocks completely for you the rest of the day. Now, I don't love ads. Nobody loves ads, but I appreciate the transparency here. You know what they need from you in order to keep their app up and running. And in return, 
they give you a lot for it. And I think this is an acceptable trade-off, and that's why I think so many people love iBiz. I'm an iBiz. This isn't the most streamlined app in the world. Its interface isn't flashy or super refined like Fresco, but it does have everything you need to get the job done. And unlike Fresco, you know that your art is your art. It's not going up to anybody's cloud or anything goofy like that. It's not going to be locked behind a paywall one day. I mean, I, I suppose that's possible, but highly, highly, highly unlikely. There are also a lot of nice quality of life things here in Ibis. I'm an Ibis. We know, like two finger touches to undo, uh, brush stroke stabilization features, a full featured layer palette with blend modes and funky stuff like that. And all of this is pretty straightforward and simple to use. It's great for beginners, and that's why I like Ibis. I'm an Ibis! Guys, this bird's a little annoying. Can we get back to the animals that are trying to kill me? <laughs>unexpected, but let's talk about Krita. Its superpower is that it's an old school style desktop app with an absolute boatload of features packed into it. It might be the most feature rich app on this list. If you want options, you want Krita. Now Krita's other superpower, yes, it can have superpower. Even Aquaman has two superpowers. He can swim really fast and talk to fish. I'm a bass! Is that it's open source? Unlike Fresco, where you have to wonder if it will remain free in the future, Krita has always been free, will always be free. Of course, it's supported by donations, so you could donate to Krita if you end up loving it and want to support it. There are some places, some storefronts like Steam, that do charge for Krita just to keep it up and running on the store. Storefront. But if you go to their website, Krita.org, totally free to download. Where is Krita available? It's on Windows, it's on Macs, it's on Linux, it's on Android, and that's it. The Android app is kind of a miracle. It's the full desktop app right here on an Android tablet. Like, literally everything. I will admit, on, on smaller Android tablets, smaller screens, it's a little clunky. The interface gets kind of big. There's not a lot of drawing space. On a really big Android tablet like this, it's spacious and amazing and fun, and I love it. It works fairly well with touch. Some of the interface elements are a little bit harder to get to because it's got drop down menus and things like that. This app is more reliant on keyboard shortcuts and that sort of thing. But once you get into the flow of it, it's, it's not bad. And for drawing, it is really good. On Mac and on Windows, it's not always like the snappiest and fastest drawing app out there, at least on this list, but it does make up for it in the depth of options that you have available. Now, the biggest drawback of Krita is that it's probably the hardest app on this list for new folks coming into art for the very first time. The more features you have, the more cluttered the interface is, and Krita can be a little overwhelming if you're starting from scratch and just figuring out how layers work and what brushes do. But that's what my intro for digital art class is for. I'm a bass! Right, anyway, Krita gets my seal of approval. Next up are a few apps that didn't quite make the cut that have in the past. First up is GIMP. I hate GIMP. GIMP can die in a fire. I don't like it. Oh, geez. What is this? Did I summon this? Is this another animal that can kill me? It's a fire alpaca. Okay, so it's definitely an animal that's going to try to kill me. Oh, the next app on our list that didn't make the cut is uh, Medibang slash fire alpaca. Oh, I get it now. These are good apps. They're open source apps. If you download them for Windows, try them out. They're almost identical to each other. They're built on the same foundation. Medibang is in more places. You can find Medibang on iPads and Android tablets and that sort of thing. This is one of those apps that has been on my list in the past, but I think some of the other apps here, some of the free apps, are doing it a little bit better than Medibang is. Medibang does have a pro version now that you can pay for. That is really slick, but that's not a free app, so it doesn't get to be on the list. Sorry, buddy. Don't get mad at me. Those are the rules. Another one that didn't quite make the list this time around is Paint.net. It is not bad, but I don't like it as some of the other apps on this list. It's a Windows only app. It's also paid in the Windows store. It's free on its site, but it's one of those sites that's kind of confusing. It's hosted on one of those sketchy places that tries to trick you into downloading spyware and viruses. So, ew. This is Sketchbook. It's been on the list before too. Didn't make the cut this time. I think the brushes for me are just a little too sensitive for my taste. It picks up even the slightest wobble in my hand when I'm drawing. Some people love that about it. They they love that sensitivity. It's also sometimes a free app and sometimes a paid app. It's kind of flipped back and forth a few times. It's also changed ownership and I, I just really haven't kept track of it in recent years. About oh, look at this cute little flu. Okay. Okay, I, I see what's happening here. What What is our next app? Blender! So, 
Is Blender a drawing app? Uh, I guess so. It's got tools like pencils and erasers and you can make amazing art in it. Do I recommend it for beginners? No, absolutely not. Under no circumstance. Well, no, that's not fair. I do recommend it under some circumstances. Blender is primarily a 3D modeling and rendering app. So it's really designed well, for that, 3D. And if I'm being honest, I love the living daylights out of Blender, but not for 2D art. This is one of those apps that has a big learning curve to it. So when you first jump in, you see a 3D cube staring you in the face with a pile of menus on every side of the screen and clicking on the wrong part of the screen brings up a totally different interface with a whole bunch of other menus staring you in the face. As a beginner, this is the sort of thing that can scare the living daylights out of you. Blender is like four or five apps in one, and that's part of the reason it's so scary. It's also worth noting that Blender is desktop only, Windows, Mac, so you're not gonna be able to use it on Android or iPads or that sort of thing. But even though I don't think it's noob friendly, I'm putting this on this list because one, it's open source, it's free, it will always be free, no strings attached. And it's an app that is just insanely fun once you get the hang of it. I've often referred to it as like adult Legos or Minecraft without alpacas. So if you really wanna learn digital art in hard mode, yeah, start with Blender. And if you just wanna learn 3D, I have some tutorials for that actually, the world's easiest Blender tutorial. I'll link it down below in the description. Now, another mobile app that's popped up recently is something called High Paint. And if you see me drawing on Android tablets in some of the reviews that I have here on this channel, you'll probably see me drawing in High Paint. It's available on Android and on iOS. And if you aren't a fan of iBez for any reason, I'm an iBez. I see you found your way back. Good for you, buddy. Then this might be worth checking out. High Paint is basically a Procreate clone. It's not quite as streamlined, but it's serviceable on an iPad and on Android. The Android part is the part that I really like. As a Procreate user, I just feel right at home jumping into this app. I know where everything is. It just feels right. This is an ad-based drawing app, so you will have to watch an ad when you open up the app most times. And there are some unlockable features, unlike iBez. Don't say it. You can't watch an ad to unlock the higher end features, which is why I think iBez is a little better for folks who are just starting out. But keep this one on your radar because it's a fun app to use, has a lot to offer. One last one, this is a quick one. This is a web-based drawing app called Lightbrush. The reason I'm including this one is because as a drawing app, it is completely built and runs inside a web browser. You don't go to a website and download it or go to the app store or anything like that, no. All in brown. You go to light-brush.art and you can just start painting. It has pressure sensitivity and everything. And it looks like just a basic drawing app. I don't think it's anything special. I don't think like the line art that it produces is particularly great. I don't think it's like nearly as responsive as a native app, but its superpower is that it works literally everywhere. iPad, it works. Android tablet, it works. If you have a Chromebook, it's hard to find art apps for Chromebooks. It works there. Desktop, it works. Mac, Windows, you name it. And it's that versatility that I think makes it really usable for a lot of folks, where some of these other apps maybe are holding you back if you can't install something on the device you're using for any reason. So those are my favorite drawing apps that are free right now. That's what I think about all these. But how about you? Is there anything that I left off this list that is worth mentioning? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you like this video, check out some of my other videos in this style. I promise I'm not eaten by any dangerous animals in those. I think. I'll have to go back and check, actually. And don't forget to check out my courses over on bradsartschool.com. Thank you for watching! Bye!